Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, please hit the subscribe button. And for those people who have hit the subscribe button, thank you so much. It doesn't show on our channel, but we're up to 4,000 subscribers. and We couldn't have done it without you. Your subscription matters to us. So thank you very much. And don't forget at the end of these videos um, to check out the videos that we've got attached. I leave these videos in at the end so you're able to see the other videos, the other interviews that you may have missed out on and the ones that we think that you would most want to watch. Okay. This video that I'm doing now was inspired by somebody on Twitter who actually just just DM'd me a message and they DM me the message and I was like, what's this conversation? But what they basically was doing, they DM me the message. There was actually a conversation between Dillian White and Huey Fury. I'm like, Eddie Hearn attached. I'm like, why are you sending me this message? So if people have got, you know, strange ways of communicating. It wasn't like, hey, check this out, check this conversation out. Or I thought you might be interested in this. No, it was nothing like that. But I do thank the lady or the gentleman, or of course in this world, the lady and the gentleman for sending me this um, tweet. It was interesting. Yeah. It's a conversation between Dillian White and Huey Fury. Now, my thoughts on this. Now, I've echoed, I've had lots of thoughts about Dillian White. I like Dillian White. I think he's a character. I'll say it before and I'll say it again. I think Dillian White is a character that isn't being maximized as a fighter. I think uh, if you're playing second fiddle to Anthony Joshua, then I think your options are in the heavyweight division, pretty bleak. Just be honest, if your promoter, if the guy that's promoting you is actually the promoter of, it, of Anthony Joshua, you probably your best advice to go and work with a rival promoter, to be honest. It'd probably bring up more interest or do your own thing. Go to the Sowlands and, and, and be with them. Um, doesn't seem to be hurt George Grove's career. Um, but the reason I say that is be because I feel that Dillian White is second fiddle to uh, to Joshua, and, and and rightly so. You know, Josh, you know Joshua is the the man that's bringing the the, money, the serious money in. He's the unified champion, so of course, you know, um, he's big time, as they say. So no disrespect to Dillian White, he wants to become champion. Do you know what? There's every possibility that he could become champion because he's hardworking, and you know. With hard-working fighters, I believe that, um, you know, it's just a t a, a, the, the, the management is key. In this era of boxing, it's about management. You can box a bit. That's great. It's managing you. It's picking you to have the right fight at the right time. And that's the difference between having a, a promoter that's got your best interest at heart and then a promoter who may not have your best interest at heart. Um, Luis Ortiz came to the UK not too long ago. And... And then he said he was with the best promoter in the world. Luz Ortiz went from fighting Brian Jennings to fighting Dave Allen and Malik Scott. No disrespect to those two gentlemen, but it isn't, you know, after you beat Brian Jennings, you, you think your career is going to skyrocket instead. It, it nosedives. And, of course, we know uh, the last couple of nights ago, uh, Mr. Ortiz came back and fought Daniel Martinez. And, you know, what I think about that. And if you don't know what I think about that, then just check out the... Uh, Luis Ortiz versus Danny Martez reaction video that's on the channel as well. Right. So my thoughts on Dillian White, a good fighter, needs to change his trainer. I've said it a thousand times, not because I don't think the trainer's any good. I think the trainer's taken him from where he was to where he is now in a better position. From now he needs to that, move to that next level. Uh, I don't know how many times I've seen Dillian White miss with the left hook and the right hand. Um, good body puncher, uh, but I think that um, White is trapped between styles, whether he's a boxer puncher or, or, or a brawler. Um, he's caught between styles, and I'd like to see him really polish that style up with a uh, a really good heavyweight trainer. Um, again, at Tony Brooks, I'd love to see him work with Tony Brooks. James Ali Bashir, I'd love to see him work with a top heavyweight trainer with proven quality. Um, Dillian White, of course, it's Dillian White's career, but I'd love to see him do that. And I'd like to see him shift over, like I said, with Frank Warren, uh, because I'm not seeing now progression with Dillian White. I think Dillian White's hit a ceiling now. I think he's just hit that point now where he 
he needs to move on and his performances haven't been there's no fight i've seen dillian white ways look spectacular workman like gets a job done but not spectacular and he needs that spectacular performance now to really make a statement he say yeah he'd be hilarious okay yeah he beat dave allen okay yeah he beat Lewis. okay yeah he's great by chisora okay but there's nothing spectacular the chisora fight was a spectacular fight don't get me wrong it was a great fight one of the fights of the year for me but it wasn't spectacular in the point of him winning it it was a spectacular fight in terms of the excitement it brought both guys getting hurt both were getting rocked that was great blow for blow punch for punch yep that was great and the build to it was fantastic but the end result i'm not sure if did dillian white's brand any 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 better and you can do all the interviews you want the ultimately people say oh he's got he's got a great fan base well really has he he may be good to look out on 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 um on in interviews and look at and view youtube but how many people are paying is how many people are transferring those youtube views into actually putting money in dillian white's pocket and turn up to the arena and watching him fight that's the difference you know is uh, potential customers and actually converting those potential customers when a guy when for example marketing when you are on doing an interview um and somebody sees you now you're the person the person's watching you listen to you in an interview as a potential customer now can you convert that customer into not watching you on a on, on an illegal stream and can convert them to want to watch you fight publicly want to go and see you fight and go to the o2 arena and pay 10 20 34 whatever it is to see you fight joshua's done that joshua's got his army of people that are going to turn up and watch him fight plus the sponsors and all the rest of it but with dillian white who are his fans that's what he needs to work out i had the same question i would ask for huey fury as well who are huey fury's fans we know Tyson Fury's fans. Who's Hugh Fury fans? So I think this fight now, Hugh Fury versus Dillian White, another, con another situation. Dillian White was about was it a year ago or a year and a half ago. Around the time where Hugh Fury and Anthony Joshua was talking about the two fighting one another, and then that kind of fell through because they felt that um, Peter Fury and, 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 and Team Fury felt that um, Joshua was not the money that was being offered by um, Matchroom wasn't enough. It was monkey money and you know peanuts so they thought they'd been disrespected so that fight didn't go through then there was talk about dillian white versus huey fury or before that and so huey was friends with dillian and they didn't really see that fight as something to happen now we have a situation where 2017 and like i said dillian white's won his fights but he's not been impressive he isn't not dillian white spectacularly he isn't so it's been workman like huey fury on, on the other hand you know people believe that he won the fight against joseph parker okay um so the danger there is that, um if huey doesn't see it as a loss and he sees it as um a win then he may perceive that i don't know i haven't spoken to peter um but he may perceive that as i didn't do anything wrong i don't have to change anything and we all know that had Huey put his foot down and really put his more combinations together, it would have been the difference between him thinking he's champion and him actually having that WBO belt now. So that would have made things interesting now. He's not the WBO champion. As um, Higgins mentioned in our interview a few days ago, the interview is on the channel, and I will attach it at the end of this video. Um, Higgins mentioned that a P was lodged and it was unsuccessful. So Team Parker move on. So this fight itself, personally, if you ask my opinion, both guys need to build their brand up. So brand A and brand B, whether it be Huey Fury or Dillian White, Dillian White, Huey Fury. For a marketing strategy, I think it's a horrendous fight. Ter terrible. It's just not the right time. There's two guys that need to build their brand. Dillian White needs to build his brand. Huey Fury needs to build his brand. I would say Dillian White builds his brand outside of sky sports and and goes with frank warren why because i think like i said before 
the, the vision is for to build brand white not to build the fan and to build a fan base and he'll build i think a better fan base going with warren in this situation for a, a future fight with joshua i also don't think a fight i didn't think the first fight with joshua was smart i don't think the second fight with joshua is smart just yet i said before white wasn't ready to fight joshua because he was injured and he was out of shape your fans said no white should fight joshua and the person who, who who's paid for it the most is Diddy and White. Not the fans. They just move on. That's boxing. They, they call for something. And then when the fight happens, they say, ah, Diddy White wasn't that good. And they move on to the next undefeated fighter. So for Diddy and White, he's got to look after his brand. I would suggest for Diddy and White for him to get a PR agent, a, a proper PR agent, and a PR agent that understands a boxing. Not these PR agents that works for big firms and haven't got a clue about boxing. Get a PR agent that understands boxing and marketing, you know, uh, uh, that understand the essence of boxing and what it takes to be a champion. That's what Dillian White needs to know the team. And I was just the same thing for Huey Fury as well. So these are two guys that don't need to be fighting one another. And I don't think it makes sense. Dillian White, number one contender for the WBC championship. Why the hell do you want to be fighting Huey Fury? I'm not disrespecting Huey Fury here. But Huey Fury, in terms of bringing to the table, it's a case of taking off the table. Huey, Huey Huey's taking something off the table. If Dillian White gets beat by Huey Fury, Huey Fury becomes... Where is he ranked in WBC, by the way? But doesn't Huey Fury then move into... Is he ranked by WBC? Does that mean that if Huey Fury beats Dillian White, he becomes number one contender for the WBC? Really? What's the point of that? What does this prove? So I don't think it's a smart fight. I don't think it's a smart fight at all. It's not a smart fight for Dillian White. Dillian White hasn't looked impressive. Why Huey Fury would accept a fight with Dillian White is beyond me. Now, if Dillian White are ready, I don't think Dillian White does well with movers. And you know what Huey Fury does? He moves. He moves. He moves a lot and he's got a good jab. So you look at Robert Hellenius and then look at an active guy who can move. And I think Huey Fury's got that. Um... And Huey Fury may, be, have, may have grown in confidence after he fought Joseph Parker. I think, well, if I fought Joseph Parker, the champion, then I might do well against Dillian White and think, well, you know what? Dillian's not looked not great. He hasn't knocked anybody out. I'll take the fight. Now, to me, if I were Dillian White, I'd be a little concerned that um, Huey Fury was in a rush to fight me. Personally, I wouldn't fight Huey Fury. He hasn't got, for me, marketing-wise, I'm talking about boxing-wise, good fight. Good British dust up. The only way I would fight Huey Fury was for a British title. Other than that, I wouldn't be fighting him at all. I'd have, I'd swerve him like a plague, not because I didn't think I could beat him, but because marketing wise and for best interest, no, not a good move. I'd rather see Dillian White fight somebody like now, like Big Baby Miller. Why? Because their their stars are compatible. Big Baby Miller is going to bring it. Dillian White's going to bring it. Big Baby Miller. It can talk up a fight. Dillian White can talk up a fight. So it will get interest. It will generate interest in America. That fight should happen. Well, I don't know if it should happen. Maybe Dillian White should go to America and fight him in America. But it's about getting paid as well. So it's what's best for Dillian White. It's not for me to decide around the negotiating table what Dillian White should be getting. It's none of my business. I'm not into boxing to find out what, what another man's making. That's none of my business. But what is my business? is um you know, not it was what is my business or what i'm interested in is to see a fighter uh, make, maximize his potential to go and become champion and to make the most earnings that he can in the sport of boxing that's what i'm interested in so hugh fury versus dillian white it's a no-go for me i wouldn't take the fight i don't know why they're talking as two guys that have got very low mark market ability and two guys and that's through no fault of their own. They do need marketing ability. Both can fight. Both got heart. But both need marketing strategies moving forward and building their brands. They both need to build their brands because their brands are weak. So what's the brand of Dillian White? Does anyone know what the brand of Dillian White is? I mean, I know he comes to you and going, oh, but what is Dillian White's brand? Is, is he the bad man of the, the heavyweight division? Is he the good guy turned bad guy? Is he the body snatcher? What is Dillian White? And who's Huey Fury? Oh, he's the cousin of Tyson Fury. Well, that's got to stop. 
that's what I'm talking about. Brands. Huey Fury is Huey Fury. Tyson Fury is Tyson Fury. Because what happens is people confuse the two between Tyson and Huey, who don't know boxing, and think, oh, well, Tyson's like Huey. Or Huey's like Tyson. You know, you want to have your own brand. So building your own brand. And I, you know, so those are my thoughts on it. The fight itself, I am not interested in it whatsoever because I want to see both of those guys. I like both of those guys. I want both of those guys. Like I said, build their brands. I'd like Dillian White to leave uh, Frank, uh, leave for Frank Warren and get a, a different trainer. And I'd like Huey Fury to um, branch out and um, go, on a, go on a bit of a tour of fighting fighters that people know about and uh, building his uh, marketing and building his brand. So both guys need to build their brand. Uh, so at the moment, both guys have got no brand. They've got no brand. Dylan White is known as the guy that got knocked out by Anthony Joshua and rocked Anthony Joshua. And Huey Fury is the guy that just lost to Joseph Parker. And he's the cousin of Tyson Fury. That's not a good brand. They're, they're not positive brands. Or the guy that fought on YouTube pay-per-view. They're not good brands. Both guys need to work on their brand. They both need to work on their brand. Okay. Uh, a powerful brand, Anthony Joshua, look at his brand, what he does. You know, um, you look at the what he's doing in terms of whether it be deodorant, whether it be um, a marketable, whether it's on Westfield Shopping Center, whether it be, you know, on TV, there's a brand there and they're selling it and it's marketing and he's making look he's making money outside of boxing with it. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, Roberta Duran says, Huey Fury, White Huey Fury would be a 12 round stinker. Okay. Oasis says, I hope this fight can be made. We, I want all heavyweights to fight each other. Nice. But time, season, marking. Um, I'm a big Fury fan, but on his, he's on the same level as Dave Allen based on the last performance as Archie Balls. Roberta Duran says, How many YouTube buys did Fury Parker get? I'd be shocked if he got over a few thousand. Interesting. Copeland Alliance says, Roberta Duran agree. It would be a stinker like all Huey, Team Fury fights. Um, that's not a reason not to make the fight. Track Media says, AJ is a paper champion. Cool. But that's a lot of money that paper's making. UK has great fans, but in the States, he would just be another guy. Dylan White looked horrible in his last fight. Mentioned that. Uh, Trap Media says, smash the like button, 23 watching. Needs to be be 15 likes at least to show love. Yep, I appreciate that, Trap Media. Need to have you in the room more. Um, White looked horrible in every fight apart from the 30 seconds against AJ. Well, that's my point there. That's the brand. Big Bay Miller versus Dillian White in New York would be a great fight. I agree. Dillian White is... His brand is hype. Yep. Well, it needs to be more than that. It's more substantial. If you Fury just steps up with his output of punches, he can beat White. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I just want all top twenty heavyweights to face each other as soon as possible. Yeah. Great. Fine. But that doesn't. You're one of those people who believe Gillian White should have fought Joshua, and it's, it's instant gratification. But did the fighter Gillian White no favors whatsoever? So uh, I know a lot of people don't understand the sense. That, I know a lot of people don't understand the logic, and maybe it's because. Maybe it's because I see things from a different perspective, and 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 it's not just about guys fighting one another. We've the, the the guys fighting one another in this era. Too many promoters are taking advantage of fighters. Too many fighters are not not taking back what taking home what they're worth. Too many fighters intellectual. Let's check this out. You've got fighters today who have retired, who have skint, but promoters are still making money off of them because they've got the rights to their videos. Every time a video is played on HBO and HBO classics or highlights or on YouTube, they're intellectual property. Every time that video is played and you're watching it, money's been made. And you know what? Is that fair? Well, the promoter and the promoter's children and the promoter's children's children, they're going to have a private education and they're having nice houses while the boxer who retired and gave them years of, of loyalty and success and money to fill their pockets and fill the boxers' pockets now is broke, retired, and looking for money. Not because of poor investments, but because the money just wasn't enough. And sadly, this is what boxing does. This is this is the dark part about boxing. 
So that's why I bang on about boxers marketing themselves. That's why I bang on about boxers making the maximum amount of money. Um, boxing promoters may not like what I've got to say, but the fact of the matter is, this is what needs to happen. And more boxing media needs to talk about things like that. And, uh, you know, it's all, all well and good sitting down and saying, ah, ha, ha, and laughing at Dillian White or laughing at the things, you know, he, he's joking and he cracks his jokes. At this minute in time, I see more people laughing at Dillian White than laughing with Dillian White. When I say they're laughing at him, it's because it's not transferring to um, bums on seats. It's got to transfer to bums on seats. Do you know what I mean? So less of the interviews, maybe. And uh, more of the come see me fight. Come see me fight. If you're in town, come see me fight. Start selling selling yourself that way. Do you know what I mean? Start dropping those subliminal messages in your interviews that, you know, it'd be nice to see more people come out and support me. And then start selling yourself. You know, making uh, fight fans want to come and see you fight. Do you know what I mean? Are, are, are you even the king of South London? They, you know, you could say I'm the king of South London. That's how you could sell yourself. That's how you sell yourself. But you can't you can't keep eating out on the fact that you, you rock Joshua. Well, that's where the media's selling it. So you need to dismiss that tag and find a new one and something else. You know, he's WBC number one contender. But there are not many people in the world that believe that he deserves to be the number one contender. You know, so it's interesting, you know, a fight against, you know, a fight with him and Luis Ortiz. Well, again, that's another fighter that really doesn't bring anything to the table in terms of tickets being sold. So a guy like Big Baby Miller, like I said, brings brings some and any and he's a Hearn fighter as well now. So it'd be interesting to see what Hearn does with Big Baby Miller. Cesaro two, maybe. I don't know. Will AJ sign another contract with Hearn? I'd say he will. He signed with US promoter. Will a would AJ make more money? Or what about AJ promote himself? Discuss, please. I think I discussed this the other day. I discussed it straight after the um, fight with um, the fight with uh, what's his name? Tackham. I mentioned it. I said um, I don't think he signs a new contract with Eddie Hearn. And um, if you listen to what Joshua says, or he wasn't saying, he says, well, Eddie can do what he's doing. I'm going to go back and talk to my team. Repeat. I'm going to go back and talk to my team. He didn't. He made a clear distinction between his team and Eddie Hearn. He didn't, he didn't talk about Eddie Hearn as we're going to go and talk about it. I'm going to go back and talk to my team. Eddie can say what he wants. I'm going to go back and talk to my team. That doesn't sound to me that all is well there, but hey, maybe I'm wrong there. Um, I don't think he will re-sign re a, a contract with Eddie Hearn. I don't, unless, unless, unless um, uh, the powers that be, it depends how much influence Hearn has higher up that can influence Joshua to stick with him. Look at Manny Pacquiao and his relationship with Bob Arum. I remember when Pacquiao wanted to leave Bob Arum. And, uh, you know, uh, they will be fighting in Argos. Well, yeah, you, 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 you see, but you see, you say that, uh, Steve Farr, you say that, but at the end of the day, I think uh, um, when you say that, there could be a, a valid point in what you're saying there. That's to say how poor their brands are. So when all these people jump up and say, oh, Dillian White, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're talking about Dillian White, the YouTube uh, the YouTube character, you know. Uh, Dillian White would best serve, better served, actually, to open his own YouTube account. Dillian, if you're listening to this, hear me out, brother. You'd be more apt to serve to opening your own YouTube account out getting somebody to carry a camera and filming you and filming your training sessions and filming uh, open workouts and filming open days. Dillian White, do me a favor. Right, brother? Do me a favor. If you're not sure, reach out to somebody who will do it. Have an open day. Have a Dillian White open day. Oh, have an open day. Meet the fans. Sign the autographs. 
get it filmed have an open day meet the fans make new fans have a Dillian White tour where you may tour do London you know Manchester Birmingham you know a day each and do an open day Dillian and that's a way that you can actually get to reach new fans and drive those ticket sales up so they can see Dillian White's a nice guy you know but when you step through the ropes you're a bad man you handle business that's how you do it that's how you go about it, Dillian your, your brand's a little bit more than um Huey's at the moment even though Huey fought against J Joseph Parker you've still got you can still eat out and sense with the Joshua thing and see what you've done since open day Dillian open day I look forward to uh hearing of you because I know I've heard that you do watch the channel but uh, I you know I've said before consider what I'm saying Dillian from marketing strategy you can't go wrong David Hay weren't stupid David Hay used to have the open days. What was he open, having open days for? Because he, he was investing in fans or he was getting fans to invest in him. So he'd contract, every autograph he signed, that's another fan that's going to be pay for a ticket. That's another fan that's going to pay for a ticket. That's another fan that's going to be part of my fan base. So you're not just relying on the promoter. You yourself could do it. You understand, Gillian? That's that's the next level. You understand? That's the next level. But do it. Have an open day. Open. You have your own YouTube channel. Stop giving away these interviews and start investing in having your own YouTube channel. And have, you know, employ one or two people to interview, do interviews with you. Do you know what I mean? And, and have that money you're making on you that 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 others are making on YouTube for you. Make the money yourself. Do that for yourself. So it's just something different. I know that often people won't talk about it, but you know what? You're looking after yourself. It's an investment in yourself. Nobody can scupper your words. If you want to say something, come off of doing stuff off Instagram like that. Do it in your YouTube channel. At least when people click your click your videos, you'll make money on it. You understand, Dillian? And 40, 50,000 views at a time you're getting, that money's not going in your back pocket. Put it in, you know, 40, 50,000 views of yourself. You're on YouTube channel. And you could talk about, you could talk about, you know, things that, you know, you could talk about things that will benefit your career, you know. Um, and you could talk about, you can talk to the fans. You can have open work, live open workouts. You can talk about, you know, what you eat, your training sessions, and you know, maybe particular negotiations or big fight announcements or in the dressing room rather than post it on Instagram and get somebody else to take it off Instagram and post it. You know, so you can get some views. So that's what we call residual income. You know, so just something for you to think about moving forward. It's different. Um, Oasis says. AJ, Herm won't let AJ fight in the States because he's afraid he will lose AJ to US promoter. What about AJ becoming a Vegas fighter? There were the stupid money. That's where the stupid money is becoming a global star. Well, eventually, AJ, if he's successful, he's going to have to move on. I mean, successful boxing wise, he'll have to go off to the States because that's where it happens. That's where it happened for Lennox Lewis. But hey, times have changed. Maybe the Mecca boxing is the UK and not America. Maybe it is. I don't know. Don't know. But yeah, Joshua fighting Madison Square Garden. Yeah, of course people would want to see that. Joshua fighting the Barclays Center in New York. Sure, people would love to see that. But that's another set of dynamics altogether. And why do you want to do that when you're comfortable at home and you're making money at home? uh dj6 says i don't know how dillian would win a single round against you bad matchup for me the easy money is a fight for chisora or miller no americans to be a bar wilder he has that match against bright jennings that's a matchup right there so i disagree with you there um spilker fighting in america he's got a big new york base uh, uh arthur spilker in new york so that's a good fight arthur spilker um Thomas Adamek 
A fight against Thomas Adamek, who's still boxing now. What about a fight against Thomas Adamek? Carlos uh, 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 Molina. Charles Martin. There's some fights there. Charlie Martin on the comeback. Eddie Chambers. I don't know. But I don't. I certainly do not think that he should be fighting Huey Fury next. Well, I think I've said my I think I've said my piece here. Um, it's a bit different, different to what people would normally expect. But like I said, Dillian, I wish you all the best in your career. I only want the best for you and your career, and, and obviously your family. Um, and uh, I, you know, my suggestion isn't to take money off anybody else, but for you to keep money in house. Those are my thoughts. Q3, Dillian White, horrified, absolutely dreadful. No, don't want to see it, not interested in it. Not one, not, not one bit am I interested in it. Uh, the pay-per-view um, in US is four times 80 pound, the UK, so money in US probably. Okay, uh, AJ scared of uh, Wilder? Yeah, I don't know if AJ scared of Wilder. I think the promoter scared of Wilder, and there's a difference between AJ being scared of Wilder and the promoter being scared of Wilder. And I think the promoter scared of Wilder because if Wilder wipes out AJ, that's the end of their cash go down the drain. We've seen it with um, Brooke when he got beat by Spence. So we don't want that too soon. Right, I'm out of here. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, leave your comments. Hey, damn, subscribe, it's free. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.